Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria and welcome to the Viking Age. Such a beautiful day out today. Can you hear the ocean? I've come here to the ocean in a land that kind of reminds me of my mother's homeland in western Sweden. And I just think it's such an appropriate location to take some photos of a Scandinavian outfit. I've been recently getting more interested in the Viking Age. In the past, I always tended to go to the later medieval period because I like how things fit really closely and it's just more of my aesthetic. But lately, I've been feeling this craving that I just want to go back further. So today the outfit that I'm going to show you is actually very very simple. It's the simplest outfit that I've ever put together and it is based on a find from Finland. I believe the grave was discovered in 1969. The find has been dated to between 1020 and 1050 so like the early side of the mid 11th century. This dress is often referred to as the Jura dress. So if you're searching for information on the find, I recommend you search for the Jura dress. For my Jura dress, I am actually just using a standard tunic that I already had. This is made using the rectangular construction method that I have in my PDF. And I also have a video that goes through the process of how to make this type of a basic tunic slash underdress. This dress is made from sort of a blue-gray linen. Well, typically we think of undergarments as white or undyed linen. You certainly could wear that underneath this. I am choosing to wear just this one, which could also be a wool tunic, by the way, in period, because I don't currently live where it's cold and I only want one layer. I've fastened my tunic with a small brooch and I do have some extras of these. I'm going to start putting some extra materials in my shop because sometimes I buy things in like small bulk amounts. Now that I'm not really taking a lot of commissions and focusing on teaching resources, I can pass those materials and supplies on to all of you. The Eura dress tunic has a different construction than this, but I already had this one and I'm just kind of experimenting with this look right now, so we're going to use it. Now this type of a tunic used as an underdress in the Viking Age, you'll often see referred to as a serk, and that is simply the Old Norse word for a shirt. The next layer that I am going to put on is a peplos. For this peplos, based on the Jura dress from that grave find, this is made of just two rectangles of fabric that are fastened together with brooches. For this peplos, it's just a rectangle of fabric in front and in back, and they are folded over so it creates that extra hanging part. I pin them so that they kind of overlap a little bit. I also pin the front so that some of the front hangs in the front a little bit more so they have a little bit of a neck space whereas the back I pinned it closer to the center. I folded over the back of my peplos less than I folded over the front, and that is so that it would be the same length in front and back, roughly, because the front likes to drape a little bit lower than the back does. The back likes to come up on your shoulders just naturally due to body physics. The woman in the Eura dress grave was buried wearing chains, so I have added some chains to this to go for that effect. Now I'm not trying to exactly copy the Eura dress, I'm sort of creating this from things that I already had. If you want to do a very simple peplos, all you need is rectangles of fabric. If you want to go a little bit more fancy, you can decorate the edge. I've used some tablet or card weaving that I created. Now I used to do tablet weaving, well I dabbled in tablet weaving eight plus years ago and I thought it would be really fun to try it out again. 
that was sort of the inspiration for this whole project actually because I just wanted to try a very simple diamond pattern to see if I could do it again. And I had enough to trim a peplos and here we are. Next for this outfit, I'm going to put on an apron. Now the apron we see in the grave find is simply a rectangle of fabric and it's belted on. I am using another piece of tablet woven trim. This one I made some eight plus years ago. In this time, you could weave cloth specifically to the width and length that you want. However, I was using some fabric I had. This is actually thrifted fabric for this apron. So I've hemmed the edges. On the Eura dress, there's decoration at the bottom of the hem of the apron. Now it is actually metal decorations, like spiraled metal pieces. For this project to just kind of experiment with the style, I thought this would be great because it's already got a decoration, even though it's not quite the same one. You know, we're trying it out here. If I find that I like wearing this style, then in the future, I would absolutely love to put in the time and do some metal spirals. And if I do that, I'll teach you to. The jewelry I'm adding is kind of typical Viking Age jewelry. This necklace is made using wire weaving, and it was actually gifted to me by my mom, Barb. That is not my mom from Sweden, but rather a very close friend that I've known as a mother figure since I was a wee child. And she also taught me to do wire weaving, so more of that is going to happen, definitely. For the hairstyle, there is a veil wrapped around the hair. You can braid your hair and put it up in different ways underneath the veil. Today I'm going to show you how you don't have to even spend that much time. So I guess I'm showing you how to be a lazy Viking, or perhaps how to dabble in the Viking era, or perhaps just making it a little more accessible if you don't have a lot of time to get ready. I've simply put my hair up in a ponytail and then did the thing where it doesn't hang all the way down, and that way I can put the veil over top of it pretty easily. I like to secure my veil with pins. This veil is further secured with a piece of tablet woven trim as a band. Now the shoes are very, very cool. This is a pair of shoes that I bought from Boots by Bohemond at Gulf Wars this year. Bohemond is my favorite person to buy medieval footwear from. The video is not sponsored, but please do go support him because he is a wonderful craftsperson. He puts a lot of research into all of his designs. I wanted to get these shoes because he was telling me about where they came from a little south in the Slavic region and I'm very interested in exploring sort of the Vikings migration patterns and also I really like the shoes. I'm just going to have to be honest, they are my favorite of the Viking Age shoes that he has so that's really why I got them. So here we have my interpretation of just a quick putting together of the Yura dress. I really, really like this because it's very comfortable. It's just kind of loose and flowy. It's not supportive. It's not tight. It's just nice clothes. You could make this warmer because all of these layers would be wool plus the linen under tunic or you can make it cooler like I did and use linen for all the layers. I'm very excited to play more with this period, though it's not very complicated in construction, which is very weird for me. I think it's very fun and comfy to wear. As I find myself veering more toward teaching and inspiring, I know that a lot of times it can be very intimidating to look at very complicated sewing projects and maybe you're just going to an event or maybe you're starting an impression or a kit or maybe you're doing a cosplay maybe you just like the clothes whatever it is it doesn't have to be really really difficult and complicated you can certainly do things that are simple and as we move forward i would love to continue to intermix those two because i'd like to show you how Anyone could really get started, and it doesn't have to be difficult. 
And also, I would like to continue to show you the aspirational side. What you can do if you put in a little bit more time and effort and you stick with it and you practice. And in that way, I would like to inspire a lot of you because I know how fun it is to look at historical clothes and even fantasy clothes. Lately, we've been veering a lot more toward historical and to take that inspiration and interpret it into something that works for us. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful, magical day, and I'll see you again very soon. Hey, Duel. That's the shot. <laughs> okay, now we can go back. My butt is very wet. <laughs>